Hey, today I'm going to shoot a video about my 16-year-old home-built 10-inch Dobsonian telescope. It's uh, basically a copy of a star splitter telescope. And it all started with an article in Astronomy Magazine in uh, 1996 that they did a write up on the 10 inch star splitter. And originally I was going to send away for the plans, but I think they wanted $40 for them. And by reading the text carefully, I was able to figure out most of uh, what needed to be done. And uh, most of the items. The smaller items store inside. Um, there are a few other pieces, and I've placed them on top of the boat here. I got two uh, truss tubes, and then two smaller tubes that support the shroud to uh, prevent stray light from getting into it. And just uh, what? A few days ago, I went to Joanne Fabrics and bought this rib knit material to make my shroud, and that's part of the reason I'm doing this, is I need to do some sewing on that. And to know where I gotta sew, I gotta put it together. So, here we go, I'm gonna put it in the tripod. Oh, let's, uh, let's take a look inside first. It's just a lid. A little bubble wrap on there for protection from the heat and uh, that's a piece you'll see where that goes here in a few minutes and uh, there's the secondary board which has the focuser and you're gonna see how that all comes together as well Okay, first thing I do when I set it up is I take the secondary board out, get it out of the way. first truss tube I put in is the one that uh, carries the tail rad. Uh, in my opinion, is the finest reflex sight you can buy. Really easy to use, really easy to adjust with the three screws on the back here. The battery in this thing has got to be, uh, actually two, two AA batteries, got to be at least six to seven years old. And uh, they're still working. This thing draws a very little amperage. So, the um, tubes clamp in here. Tubes clamp in here on these channels and using a J-bolt type of uh, clamp. Basically it's just a hook that goes around this pipe and pulls it into the channel. Second tube goes in exactly opposite that one.
secondary board clamps to those tubes just like they clamp into the box they fit into these tracks here J bolts hook over them and pull them down into the channel you can see the secondary mirror mount uh, started off as a mirror mount that I bought but I wasn't satisfied with it so I modified it with this punched metal and originally it actually came over the edge of the mirror about an eighth of an inch all the way around so I was I was losing mirror by using that mount this one here is simply bonded to the mount with shoe goo pretty good adhesive I'm gonna angle this camera up just a little bit now so that you can see what I'm doing up higher. And all I've done is slip the secondary board over the tubes. Tighten the thumb nuts. And I try not to tighten anything completely until I've pretty much got it all assembled. The uh, clamps in the box are pulling these tubes out this way, giving it rigidity and an axis in this direction. And then these ones are clamping the tubes in this direction, giving it rigidity on that axis. And uh, you can see once I've tightened them, it's quite sturdy. Notice the, uh, the altitude bearings right here. This is simply Formica material. Um, I can't remember what it was called, but it's a rather grainy texture to it. And then I just use a couple of uh, furniture gliders down at the bottom for uh, the bearing surface. Next piece I put in is this one here. This uh, it slides over the tracks that uh, hold my secondary board in place when it's stored. I was surprised at the amount of contrast that little device uh, created. And all it is is a, it's a material called plastic ore or coroplast. Originally I had a light shroud made out of that stuff, but uh, it only lasted a couple of years before it started splitting and cracking. And I never really liked it anyhow because I had to carry the telescope in the back of a pickup truck and it was so light I had to put stuff inside of it 
to keep it from blowing away. These are an improvement I did uh, several years ago so that I could incorporate a light shroud like I have now. And they're just a couple of pieces of aluminum tubing epoxy together. In fact, I'm still learning how to set this up because of the, of the change with the light shroud. And, uh, I'm supposed to put the light shroud over at this point here. I said before this is a uh, called rib knit material it's basically t-shirt tubing Once I have that on, I can put these secondary truss tubes in place. That tubing is really nice because it's just the perfect diameter for this thing. It gets a little bit of tension, but not too much. The secondary truss tubes rigid. I had to make these pieces. This is just aluminum rod. And uh, I need to angle this camera up again. And there you have it. There's my 10 inch dub. Once I've reached this point, of course, I will pull these shrouds up. This one up, the other one down. And eventually, I've got to cut a hole in this shroud so that it fits around the tail rad. And I have to cut a hole in this shroud so that it fits around the focuser. And uh, I'm gonna have to stitch the edge of that shroud. I have a little hand sewing machine. I hope will do the job, keep it from unraveling. 
and uh, that's pretty much it. Once I reach this point, all I do, and here, and let me show you a close-up of these bearings I was talking about earlier. There's the formica material bonded to the edge. Now the tail rad telescope, these bearings were uh, made of an aluminum material, much lighter than this, and they were, this is actually a, a, a 12 inch diameter circle, so it's a six inch radius, and the, in the tail rad, it went right across like that. And I actually added an extra inch, and that what that let me do was sometimes if I'm up on a ridge, I can actually use this for terrestrial observing if I can set it up on a high enough platform. Because it allows the telescope to go fully horizontal and even beyond horizontal. This formica material riding on these nylon gliders works real good. It uh, moves easily and yet stays put when you let go of it. And I used a similar material down here on the bottom of the rocker box, but it's not quite as uh, grainy as this texture. And, but it serves the same purpose. It allows the tel telescope to pivot smoothly, smoothly, and yet stop and stay put. It takes a pretty strong breeze to push it around. And I, I messed up, I will admit. Originally, these, uh, these cutouts here accommodated these nuts. And uh, it turned out they weren't necessary. I had a problem with balance at first. I couldn't figure out how to balance it. And one day, it just occurred to me. And all I did is I, I disassembled it partly. I took these bearings off of here. And there's a, there's a center screw on the other side here. And uh, you can see that center screw right there. There's a similar one on this side. And that's the center point of these bearings. So I took these bearings off and I laid this telescope flat on a level table. And I laid a, a, a piece of... Uh, dowel rod across it like right here but underneath and I just rolled it back and forth until it balanced and once it balanced I just made me a pencil mark drew a straight line across and that is the where that line and the center line of the box meets is the center point of these bearings worked perfect I encourage anybody who has some basic uh, cabinetry skills to build one. It's not hard at all. I'm not a rocket scientist. In fact, I only have a GED. And uh, if you want, you can grind a mirror, but mirrors are available commercially. Another point is that uh, there's a formula to figure out how far away to place your secondary mirror from the focuser. I tried using this formula, but I'm not much with algebra. In the end, all I did was I made sure these tubes were way longer than they needed to be. I set my focuser to the middle of its travel. Just screwed it out. I screwed it all the way out and screwed it all the way back in and then reset it to the halfway point. And then I just took it outside and with it pointed straight up, there's always stars even straight up. I just pushed it up and down until I got a clear image. 
and I locked my clamps down and uh, that was where I cut the tubes off. Originally, the uh, tubes stopped at these bolts. Same thing down below. Uh, an upgrade I did a few years ago was to incorporate these angle plates here on each side and a similar set down at the bottom of the tubes for the tubes to stop against. Much cleaner way to do it and uh, shouldn't have much trouble figuring out how to do that once you've uh, got your telescope assembled at this point just make a scratch mark right here on the tube that's where you want to cut your tubes off at. So, there you go 21 minutes thank you